Now that we're equip equipped with the dot product, we can actually, uh, we'll see that some bases for Rn are actually much nicer than other bases. Um, to see how this works, let's look at an example in R2. So suppose we have some vector x that could be anything in R2, so its entries are x1, x2, and let's uh, look at the coordinates for this vector relative to a few different bases. So first let's look at the standard basis. Um, now x is, for the standard basis, basis, it's actually very straightforward to explicitly write the vector x in terms of this basis. So it's, it's just x1, e1, plus x2, e2, right? But even if we, even if we didn't know that, right, there are some coefficients for, for this standard basis that, that would work, right? In fact, it's x1, x2, but, you know, there, <laughs> let's pretend for now that we didn't know what those coefficients were. We'd get something like this. Um, so what we can do, or one question we could ask is, what do you get if you just take the dot product of x with uh, the basis vectors? So let's calculate what is e1 dot x, and let's calculate e2 dot x. So for e1 dot x, um, right, x is this vector here, so we can distribute the dot product over this sum. So we get a1 e1 dot e1 plus a2 dot e1 dot e2. And sorry, this a2, this is just scalar product, it's not a dot product. Okay, so that's what we get, get when we distribute this dot product. And then uh, e1 dot e1, well if you look at e1, <laughs> e1 dot e1 is just 1. So this is a1 and um, e2 dot e1, right, the second dot product, if you take the dot product of e2 and e1, you get zero, right? This is reflecting the fact that e1 is perpendicular to e2. So we dotted e1 with x, and what we got was a1. And remember, a1 is the coefficient for this basis vector. So dotting x with this basis vector gave us the coefficient uh, that, or the coordinate corresponding to that basis vector. All right, let's have a look at what happens when we dot x with e2. So again, we're going to distribute this dot product over uh, x expressed in terms of the basis. So e1, a1, e1 plus a2, e2. And this time when we distribute the dot product, we get so a1, e2 dot e1 plus a2, e2, dot e2. This time it's the first term that turns out to be 0 because e2, dot e1 is 0. Plus, and then in the second term, e2, dot e2 is just 1, so we get a2. So again, we're finding that dot, taking the dot product of x with this, with this basis vector gives us the corresponding coordinate for, uh, for x, right? The coordinate corresponding to that basis vector. And that's, that's a really nice thing, right? So what we're seeing here is that x is actually just uh, e1 dot x times e1 plus e2 dot x times e2. In this case, this is sort of, it seems almost trivial because after all, e1 dot x is just x1 and e2 dot x is just x2, right? But there are actually some other bases for which this happens. Uh, let's look at this example. So um, again, we could write x in terms of this basis. There are some coordinates, uh, a1, maybe I shouldn't call it a, because it's going to be a different coordinate than when we were working with the standard basis vector. So why don't I change the name of it? Let's call it b1, w1 plus b2, w2. So there are some. Uh, coordinates relative to this basis. So now let's check what happens if we do, if we take the dot product of x with each of these basis vectors. So we're going to get, again, distribute the dot product. We get b1 uh, w1 dot w1 plus b2 w1 dot w2. Now, 
to work these out, we'll need to actually compute the dot product of these things with itself. So it's going to be b1 times, so 1 root 2 times 1, 1 dotted with 1 over root 2 times 1, 1 plus b2 times 1 over root 2 times 1, 1 dotted with 1 over root 2 times minus 1, 1. Okay, and then let's see, 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 is a half, so we're getting a b1 times a half, and then 1, 1 dotted with 1, 1 is 2, so times 2. So these cancel, we're just getting b1 from this first term. And then from the second term, 1, 1 dotted with minus 1, 1, that's 0, so we get 0. So look, we just got b1. So dotting x with w1 actually gave us the corresponding coordinate of x relative to this basis. All right, so what, what if we dot uh, x with w2? Like this. Uh, so we're going to get b1 w2 dot w1 plus b2 w2 dot w2. And I'll let you work through the details, but the same calculation as for w1 shows that this dot product is 0, and w2 dot w2 is actually 1. So this whole thing just gives us b2. So w2 dotted with x just gives us the corresponding coordinate for x written as uh, in terms of this basis. So what this is saying is that, again, x is just like with the standard basis, x is just w1 dotted with x times w1 plus w2 dotted with x times w2. So what we're seeing here is, at least for these two bases, the standard basis and this basis of w's, it's actually very easy to find the coordinates of a vector. You just, the, uh, the coordinates of a vector are just the dot product of that vector with the, with the uh, basis that you're working with. That makes you wonder if this is true for every basis. Well, let's look at one more example. Um, let's uh, try this, this basis. So, uh, you know, in terms of this basis, x can be written, maybe we'll use c's now. X can be written in terms of this basis, so C1, V1, plus C2, V2. So let's try taking the dot product of X with these basis vectors. So V1 dot X, that's C1, V1 dot V1, plus C2, V1 dot V2. So c1 times, and then when we work out v1 dot v1, it turns out that's actually 4. And then plus c2 times, and then v1 dot v2, that's 2, it looks like. Okay, so v1 dot x is 4c1 plus 2c2. Okay, and then if, if we do the same thing with v2, right, we get c1 v2 dot v1 plus c2 v2 dot v2 and this this is let's see v2 dot v1 that's 2 and then v2 dot v2 is also 2 it looks like so v2 dot x is 2c1 plus 2c2 okay so what does this tell us about the coordinates of x relative to this basis, right? We're, you know, in the previous example, C1, the, these coordinates just showed up on their own on these right-hand sides, but in, for this particular basis, that doesn't happen. Instead of just getting C1 over here, we got 4 times C1 plus 2 times C2. So, you know, if we were actually trying to find these coordinates, the C's, we now have some linear system to solve to find the c's, right? Which amounts to calculating an inverse matrix, which is a lot more difficult than just calculating the couple dot products that we had to calculate for our first two example bases. So what is it that made this happen? Let's look back at the first two examples and compare this to this, the third example and, and see what, what is it about the first two bases that made them so nice when we were doing this calculation. Well, so 
you know, why right here, for example, why did this just turn out to be B1? Well, first of all, we had to get a zero right here. Where did this zero come from? Well, that came from right here. And this is zero because w1 dot w2 is zero, right? In other words, w1 is perpendicular to w2, or orthogonal, right? So that's part of what made this so nice. The other thing that made this so nice is that this right here just came out to be one. But where did that number come from? Well, that's this dot product right here, right? So one of the things that made this nice was that this dot product was one, but that dot product was w1 dot w1, and that came out to be one. So another way to say this is that the magnitude of w1 was one. In other words, w1 is a vector that has length one. And then looking over at the uh, other dot product with the basis vector, here we have w2, w1, so that, right, that also, we already know, that had to be zero because w1 and w2 are perpendicular. And then here, w2 dot w2, that came out to be one, so again, that's because the magnitude of w2 is one, so w2 dot w2 is one. So, uh, and you know, these, these three things, so the th three things that we found that made this basis so nice are that these two basis vectors are perpendicular, and each basis vector on its own has magnitude one. Right? The, these three things are also true for the standard basis. Right? Standard basis vectors are perpendicular, and they're each length one. This is very different for this last basis. Right? For this last basis, v2, sorry, v1 dot v1, Right, we saw that things are nice if this comes out to be 1, but in this example, v1 dot v1 is 4. v1 dot v2, right, we saw that things are nice if v1 dot v2 is 0, so that they're perpendicular, but in this example, this is 2. And then v2 dot v2, things are nice when this comes out to be 1, but in this example, this is 2. So what we're seeing is that a nice basis is uh, a basis vector, a, a basis made up of vectors. Um, so if we name our, I don't, let's not name our basis vectors, these uh, use, I guess. <laughs> so a nice basis is one where each basis vector has length 1 and different basis vectors so if you pick two different basis vectors from your list uh, they're orthogonal right, that's what that's what made our first two example bases so nice so uh, these two properties for a basis, um, any basis that has these two properties is called orthonormal. Okay, so an orthonormal basis is one where the dot product of two basis vectors is it's one if it's the same basis vector twice. So any vector dotted with itself in this basis is just one. And if you have two different vectors from your basis, then their dot product is zero. So that means that they're perpendicular, right? So this one says vi is perpendicular to vj. And this one says that the magnitude of each individual vector has to be one, OK? Um, so this any basis satisfying this property is called orthonormal. Ortho just means perpendicular, and normal is supposed to imply that it has length one. So, you know, sometimes we talk about normalizing a vector, which means making it length one. So that's the sense in which this this word normal is being used here. Of course, we could have an an orthonormal not just for our all of R n, but for any subspace of R n. So you know, we could have a a, a basis for a subspace, so it might have just k vectors in it. 